So our next uh, presenter is uh, applied linguistics and uh, very interesting and controversial topic of the East. Okay, so I'm going to begin with kind of tying in how I got into doing a linguistics project when I was studying interpreting and translation. Um, it seems like kind of a jump, but when I break it down for you, it won't seem that way. Um, indirect objects and direct objects have always been confusing, especially as a second language learner. I'm thinking even when I was taking English in elementary school, that might be the last time that I learned about direct and indirect objects for English. Then in Spanish, I think I probably stopped learning about them in Spanish 3 in high school, and it's typically pretty hard to acquire direct and indirect objects in Spanish, especially for English speakers, because we're used to these coming after the verb. So for us to have to learn Spanish where these objects are going to come before the verb, it's really hard for us to kind of really acquire direct and indirect objects in the second language. So today I'm going to talk to you about leísmo, which if you've taken Spanish, you probably know what this is. Um, you, may, you might have forgotten about it by now because it's kind of something that you hear in lower level classes and then it's kind of like, um, well, you don't have to worry about this unless you're in Spain, so don't worry about it. It's kind of like Los Otros, where everybody's like, okay, you don't need that. <laughs> so you just kind of forget about it and move on. But I'm here today to tell you that it's more important than we previously thought. <laughs> okay, so what is laismo? Previously, it's been thought of um, in two participant situations when there's a singular masculine direct object. So that's what you're gonna see in Spain. We have this use of the dative clitic, which is lay, instead of the accusative clitic, which is low, for direct objects. So it seems kind of weird that we're using the um, marker for the indirect object to mark a direct object. So here's the example that you're going to typically see in Spain, and we're going to refer to this as dialectal leísmo. Lo vi, I saw him. Le vi, I saw him. So they both mean I saw him. They're both marking a direct object, yet the first is using the accusative, and the second is using the dative. So why do we see this happen? Okay, so my problem that I decided to investigate, my research question was, is laismo just a phenomenon that we're gonna find in northern and central regions of Spain? Because that's what we're typically taught. We're taught, okay, you'll find it in Spain, not in Latin America, ever. So in my opinion, there's another kind of laismo that we're gonna see, which is called, I'm gonna call general laismo. And this is gonna be a different setup than what you would see for the laismo that I just that I just showed you that you see um, in different regions of Spain. So by using that concept, I'm going to try to show that um, you can actually extend this to Latin America. So this is my thesis that laismo is part of a more general phenomenon that occurs throughout the Spanish-speaking world, which has not been systematically documented. Therefore, since this occurs in Latin America and in Spain. This phenomenon would be considered much big, much bigger, and happen on a much grander scale than the dialectal laismo that we learn about in Spanish too. <laughs> okay, so how how does this laismo exist? How did I how did I think about this laismo as coming about? Um, what is the setup for this laismo? Here's an example that you would see typically. Um, Al abuelo le aburrió la película. Al abuelo lo aburrió la película. Both times, it's saying the movie bored the grandfather. Yet, you'll notice in the first case, we're using the dative for the direct object, and in the second, we're using the accusative. But interestingly enough, uh, if you're a native Spanish speaker in this room, um, raise your hand if you're a native Spanish speaker in this room. <laughs> okay, raise your hand if you would choose 2A over 2B. Which one sounds more correct to you? 2A, al abuelo le aburrió la película, or al abuelo lo aburrió la película? I would say le. Le? Yeah, which is interesting because uh, we see that actually we have the subject, which is the movie, and we have the direct object, which is the grandfather. But interestingly enough, we see that people tend to prefer marking this direct object with the dative which would technically be wrong. So why is that the preferred choice? Why are, why are all these native Spanish speakers making this wrong grammatical decision? 
Okay, so first I'm going to start out explaining animacy because, as Samantha told me, not everybody knows what that means. Um, <laughs> animacy is being animate, which is the characteristic of being living. Um, usually when we think of animacy, we think of uh, animated cartoons. So um, I decided to kind of bring that down to y'all's level so you wouldn't be thinking about that. Um, so we're going to be talking about animate and inanimate um, entities. So an animate entity would be, for example, a person. Um, an animal would be animate. But if we're talking about a ball, um, a desk, that would obviously be inanimate. So when we see the plus A, that's going to be representing an animate entity. And when we see the minus A, that's representing an inanimate entity. So um, I decided to look at all the different situations where we would have um, two participants in one situation. And I'm going to start with the universal alignment that we see. And this does not represent a case of laismo. We're going to see an animate subject and an inanimate direct object, which is kind of the typical sense that you would expect the girl hit the ball, the girl wrote the paper, you know, we're going to expect that subject to be alive and, and him or her to be do, doing something upon an object that is most likely not animate. So this is the universal alignment. This is what's expected. But we're going to move along and talk about when we have an animate subject and an animate direct object. Now this is the case that we just talked about with lo vi and le vi, I saw him because we have um, animate subject and animate direct object. So we have this case made to have leismo in Spain. So this is our dialectal leismo that you're only going to see in Spain with the two animate participants. So I have pulled this example um, from the data. Ella le veía pasar y sonreía sin dejar de leer. So you'll see in that situation we have the animate subject and the animate direct object. So because they are the same level of animacy, you're going to see this, um, this ability to use lay. So then we move on to our next type, um, where this is really going to be the most important thing that I'm looking at, is when we have an inanimate subject and an animate direct object. So this is what we saw with al abuelo lo aburrió la película, al abuelo le aburrió la película. You'll see that we have um, the movie, which is the inanimate subject, boring the grandfather who is animate. So interestingly enough, in Spanish, this is the opposite of the universal alignment that I explained at the very beginning. So it kind of sets up this schemata for a general lazy mode that I'm going to talk about, which is exactly what can be found in Latin America. And here's one example that I pulled from the data. El humor en todas sus formas le divertía. Humor in all of its forms amuses him. So we have, once again, that inanimate subject and animate direct object. Lastly, we're going to talk about when both the participants are inanimate, which, interestingly enough, this is also going to be a case of leismo because they're of the same level in the um, animacy hierarchy. So yes, we're going to see this, but it is less common than the previous two. We're mainly going to be focusing on when we have this inanimate subject and animate direct object. So how did I go about trying to figure out if this existed in Latin America or not? Well, firstly, we started with these verbs, which are considered psychological verbs. What are psychological verbs? They have to do with experiencing emotion and with cognition. So basically, these verbs were perfect for me to choose because, once again, I'm investigating the um, inanimate subject and animate direct object. So you're going to see many times with these verbs, that's going to be the exact setup. Um, for example, how we saw with the movie board, the grandfather, um, we'll see the wind bothered me, the book offended me, things like that. Um, so you're going to see that this is really a typical setup to see that inanimate subject but with the animate direct object. And you'll see with these verbs that they have the option to take the dative clitic or the accusative clitic. Okay, so this is just a screenshot of, um, I used the, the RAI, uh, the Real Academia Española. I used their corpus that they have, Corpus 21, and I was able to search by location, and I was able to search with, which, uh, with each of these psychological verbs and with lay. So this is a specific search that was in Argentina with preocupar and lay. So for example, how would I go about counting these? Um, I would start with seven because I kind of wanted to do it at random. I didn't want it to be uh, where I was kind of just counting the ones that I really wanted that explained my data. <laughs> but um, 
So I started with seven, and then I would go by tens. So seven, 17, 27, 37, on and on, so on like that and so forth. So for example, in this one, I would look, amigo de Chile, que le preocupa de verdad el destino de la Argentina. So we see that inanimate subject, um, the destiny of Argentina. So I would mark that. So what I'm looking for is the inanimate subject. Because anytime that I see this inanimate subject and with this verb and the, the dative clitic, it's obvious to me that this is a case of laismo. Whether or not the subject is, uh, or the direct object is animate or inanimate, because both cases would be a case of this general laismo. So here were my results. Um, this number that you're going to see in brackets um, was the total number of results when I went on the corpus. And then these are all the different verbs that I looked at. Once again, the psychological verbs. I decided to look in only three different countries, Spain, Argentina, and Mexico, um, mainly because, first of all, their population size. Um, they have, they're very large. They have a large amount of uh, Spanish speakers in each of these countries. And second of all, because of um, on the corpus, they had the most amount of data from these countries. So I figured in order to generalize it, I should pick the countries that um, offered the most data. And I didn't want to go through all 23 countries, because no offense, that's, that would be a lot. <laughs> um, so you'll see, interestingly enough, that many of these uh, percentages that I have are 90% or above for having an inanimate subject. So um, it really would suggest that there is this presence of this general type of laismo in Latin America, because you can see that in both Argentina and Mexico. And I will say, you find a low percentage up here with Argentina and Animat. But for me, the reason, um, the reason that happens is when we think of this psychological verb, encouraging, I mainly think of a person encouraging another person to me. So that could explain that low number for me. So what is my conclusion? That, that this dialectal laismo that we've talked about that's in the northern and central regions of Spain is not the only laismo that exists. Laismo should be able to be generalized to all Spanish-speaking countries. It's when you pronominalize an accusative object with the dative clitic when it is equal or higher in the animacy hierarchy, which is what we've seen with the um, chart that I showed you all earlier. And that's it. <laughs> Just blew everyone's minds. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so two of the most uh, commonly studied psych verbs are gustar and encantar, and I noticed they were missing. Mm -hmm. um, also, felt bad, fasting marriage. So, how did you choose of the available psych predicates the ones that were up on, on the screen? Um, we split between the psychological verbs that can take the accusative clinic. And the accusative and dative clitic, and those that can only take the dative clitic. So with gustar, you're not going to find it with the accusative clitic. Yeah. So you didn't look at any of those just to see if there was variation? I, I looked. Realized. I actually looked at those verbs as well. It was a third group, but you really barely find any results with the accusative clitic and the verbs like gustar. In the cases where you have a verb like aburrir, when so so in, in the cases when you have an accusative argument, mm -hmm. it cannot be doubled. That is, you can't have the actual referent, right, and the the clitic itself, mm -hmm. right. So in the cases, the, the clear case of the psych verb, you know, you can you can say me gusta a mí. You mm -hmm. cannot say gusta a mí. Yeah. And in the case of aburrir, I don't believe the película aburre a él. Right? You have to have something in there, right? Le mm aburre -hmm. In which case, maybe it's not a dative at all, but, it, mm -hmm. but it's an accusative. That could be a diagnostic. I'm not saying that all of these psych verbs behave that way. But yeah. that would be a secondary diagnostic to let you know if it's behaving like a accusative. Oh, well, and that's, being, that's actually and what I, I think that it is a, an accusative that's being marked as a dative. But in those cases, if it is, then doubling should be permitted. Mm -hmm. In the case it isn't, doubling should uh, the, yeah. you shouldn't be able to leave off the clitid and only have the the um, the full the reference it's referring to. Mm -hmm. so whatever that may be, just a secondary yeah. pass <laughs> to give you another uh, diagnostic. Yeah.